In Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, we meet a squirrel. The squirrel in Norse mythology's name is Ratuskar. Ratuskar? I think it's Ratuskar. Not too sure. I tried to give myself a, a, a pronunciation guide, but now I'm, I'm kind of second guessing that. Ratuskar is what we're gonna go with. Ratuskar's whole goal in life is to create chaos with two different creatures at different ends of the world tree. So when Magnus and his friends are having to travel the world tree, they accidentally meet up with Ratuskar and his bark is legitimately worse than his bite. His bark, while it is loud and obnoxious and I mean, do squirrels even bark? But it telepathically tells you all of your things that you've done wrong, all of your worst fears. Things like, you're, in Magnus's case anyway, things like, you're not gonna save your mom. Things like, why do you think you're good enough? Things like, you should have stayed dead, which makes sense if you've read the story. It's, it's a thing. But all of these things have a layer of truth to them. But the, it's not that they're true, it's that they've taken the fears of Magnus and they've twisted them. Today on Geek Devotions, we're gonna talk about how our thoughts can influence us. Hello and welcome to Geek Devotions, the show from Devoted Geeks who are devoted to letting people know that they are loved. I am Celeste and we are so glad that you have hit play today. If you don't watch past this point, hey, you're loved. God loves you. We love you. We are in the middle of mythical mayhem and we are so excited about this. We are are delving into different mythologies, all the different interesting stories that are going on. I had never heard of Ratoscar before, and he's a fascinating little critter. Um, <laughs> like we said in the intro, Magnus and his friends are running from Ratoscar, and once they're safe, Magnus is reeling from this mental attack, and he asks his friend Blitzen, who seems to be okay, Blitzen's a dwarf, uh, how he's managed to travel the world tree so many times and how he doesn't seem to be affected by Ratoscar's stuff. And Blitzen says this, kid, he didn't say anything I don't say to myself every day. This made me so sad for Blitzen because just from the perspective of Magnus, the things that he was saying were preying on, on thoughts and doubts in Magnus's mind that even if they're true, were being twisted, that weren't, it, it wasn't accurate, preying on the fears that he had. And that made me think about, well, oh my gosh, what does Blitzen say to himself every day? And then I went, what do I say to myself every day? What do you say in your head about yourself every day? Our thoughts and the way that we treat ourselves is important. 2 Corinthians 10 and 6 said that we should take every thought captive into the submission of Christ. And that is a great verse for this, but let's, let's look into what it actually means. I've heard people say that you should imagine putting your thoughts in a jail cell and that probably works great but not all of your thoughts are bad but all of your thoughts should be brought under the submission of Christ so even if you're not thinking things that you shouldn't like I'm a terrible person like I'm not good enough like I mess up every time I do X, Y, Z thing, even if you're just having, having normal everyday thoughts, you need to make sure that you are mentally going, how does this line up with Christ? This seems like a lot. It seems like it's a big, huge mental exercise to do this. But if you start small and you're just going, let me start being aware of 
one type of thought. Every time I, I notice myself thinking this, I'm going to stop and think about what scripture says. Think about what's true. Think about if these thoughts are accurate to what Christ says about me. It's a slow process, like most things in Christianity, but eventually you will get to the point of where you don't have to think about it as much. It becomes a habit. It's not so much that it it becomes something that you, you have to make yourself do. It becomes something that you automatically just go, oh, okay, this thought means this. It's understandable to have these things going on through your head, to have negative self-talk, to have thoughts of, well, I'm just a mess up. It's understandable and it's human. The issue comes in when we go, that's true, when it's not. Or if it is true, then maybe you're blowing it out of proportion. Maybe you're focusing on it too much. Maybe you've let the thought of, okay, I'm bad at this, become a thought process that you're stuck in and it's just looping in your brain and that's all you're thinking of. That's when it becomes a problem. That is what taking every thought captive means. It's training your brain to not focus on things it shouldn't focus on, whether that's external things, such as as shows and TV and books and, and situations that you shouldn't be a part of, or if it is an internal discussion with yourself about you that is not accurate or is not positive. One thing that I, I personally have started doing is when I find myself focusing on things that I've done wrong, things where I feel like I've failed, things where I, I am beating myself up internally over it. I replace that with scripture. It's a, it's a hard process, but I automatically, not automatically, it's not automatic yet, but I go, you know what, that this is not a good thing. I don't need to be I don't need to be sitting in this because it's just going to spiral me into despair. Let me think about this. Let me think about the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. Let me think about Junia. Let me think about JL. All of these stories in scripture that I love. Let me think about that. And it helps to change my attitude. It helps to change my perspective. It doesn't change the truth of the matter of I've done something that makes me feel like I failed, but it does change my attitude about it to where I can now go, okay, let me look at this from a perspective of how do I fix this rather than just spiraling into a downward issue where I can't think of anything else. Okay, guys, that was your devotion for the week. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check us out on all the things. We're going to be having some really cool articles and a guest article on our website that's going to be really great. I can't wait. We also have several podcasts coming out this month. It's going to be a good month. It's going to be Mythical Mayhem. We also have Mythical Mayhem shirts as well as an answer to the age-old question of if Mary knew. Answers yes. <laughs> we want to give a big shout out to our patrons who you can be a part of for as little as a dollar a month. If it wasn't for them, I would not have been able to listen to the Magnus Chase books because it just wasn't a book I owned. So I needed to get it and I'm thankful for that. Okay guys, it is now time for the question of the week. Question of the week is this. What's your favorite Norse myth? I'm, I'm not terribly familiar with the Norse myths. Um, if you, if you listen to We Read Allegedly, you know a while back we did a book called Shadow of the Gods and that was my introduction to a lot of Norse mythology outside of Marvel. So if your only introduction to Norse mythology is Marvel, that's okay. 
<laughs> but it's a fun, a fun little mythology. There's a lot of different things in it, and and like Ratuscar, Ratuscar, Ratuscar. Somebody is gonna come after me for pronunciation, pronunciation of this. But <laughs> okay, guys. Well, with all that being said, stay devoted. Peace and love.